What I have here is a simple script file that I create five variables, R1, R2, C1, C2, and M. When I run this, notice in my workspace, I see my five variables. And what I can see is I see the values. They're more than just single numbers now. I can see the size. So C1 is a seven by one, seven rows, one column, where R1 is a one by seven, so one row, seven columns. I can list out the min and the max as well. If you're interested in more information, you can right click this and you can see other things. Um, in general though, this is a pretty good set. Uh, there are other ways to get this information um, than staring at your workspace. I wanted to focus this video on a couple key functions that we can use in order to work with arrays. The first one is size. If I do S equals size of R1, if I do that, I'm gonna right click and see what happens in our command window. Notice S is an array itself. It's an array, a row vector of two elements where the first element is the number of rows, the second one is the number of columns. There's a couple ways we can use size. We can do it that way. We can also do RC equals size R1, where it returns two pieces of information, where those two are in separate variables. Um, those are the two main ways. We can also do uh, R equals size R1 comma one, where it gives me the first dimension. It's the number of rows or C equals size R1 comma two, where it gives me the second dimension. So here's another way to get the rows and columns of a variable. The next one is length. So length is really useful for vectors. So L equals length of C2. If I do length of C2, it's gonna return however many elements there are. I can also find the length of a matrix, length of M, however, it's going to give me the larger of the two dimensions. So M, as we can see over here, is a three by six. Length returns six because six is bigger than three. Another one is numal and N dims. Numal returns the number of elements in an array. So if I say N equals numal M, it tells me the number of elements, which would be three times six or 18. N dims returns the number of dimensions. So if there's one dimension, two dimensions, you can even have more dimensions if you want. Some other functions that I wanna point out are zeros, ones, and i. Zeros, ones, and i behave the same where they can create matrices with predefined numbers. So if I wanna create a matrix of zeros, I can type zeros, and then the number of rows and columns I want. So three, five. So Z creates a matrix full of zeros with uh, three rows, five columns. I can also give it a single number where I type zeros, um, six. This will make a square matrix of six rows, six columns. Ones and I um, are very similar. The only difference is ones is gonna create a matrix full of ones. So here's my matrix full of ones. And then I is going to create a identity matrix. So that's very relevant in linear algebra where it creates a mat uh, matrix full of zeros with ones along the main diagonal. And this is true even if you can, you can give it a non-square matrix. So for nine, it will um, create a matrix with ones along the main diagonal starting at location one, one, first row, first column. And then lastly, rand I. I use this one a lot. Um, it's really useful to create a matrix with random integers. So rand I, I stands for integers. You can give it a range. So four, 10. So I want numbers between four and 10. And then the size of the matrix. So five rows, three columns. Now it can give me a random matrix and I can do it again. It's gonna be different numbers every time. So those are some really useful functions to use when it comes to creating matrices of predefined numbers or interrogating um, variables in order to determine what size or number of elements they have.